Hey, what's up? I'm Craig and this is Grow Paradise. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing five hardy begonias that we should all be growing, even if our gardens experience freezing winters. <laughs> So this border is the narrow shady border in the Grow Paradise Garden and this year I've experimented with hardy begonias and I love hardy begonias because I just think they're a really really underrated plant especially for tropical style gardens. Now there are so many different types that we can grow and they are fantastic for foliage and for flowers. So many people think of begonias as like nana's plants that would be in a hanging basket with those big blousy flowers just trailing over and that's not always the case. So many of the parent plants of those kind of gaudy hybrids like go right back to these stripped back leafy begonias. And because so many of these are from high altitudes, they are reasonably hardy because they're from those mountainous regions in the wild that experience colder temperature fluctuations. So let's have a look through some of these plants and I'll tell you which are my favourite. So we'll start here. This is Begonia grandis, Evansiana, and this is a variety called Alba because it has amazing white flowers that are just starting to form buds on the tip of this plant. Now, Begonia grandis is one of the easiest to grow. It grows to about 50 to 60 centimeters tall on thick fleshy stems. And you get these lovely asymmetrical, typical begonia leaves. And on the back of this one, it's got this coppery red underside. Now there is a cultivar called Red Undies, which obviously has an accentuated red underside on the leaf, but most Begonia grandis subspecies Evansiana have this red venation on the bottom. Some have red flushing on the stems and the leaf stems as well. Now, something that's great about this plant and a few others in this selection of five hardy begonias is that it's adapted to reproduce itself by producing bulbils on the leaf axils. That's the area between the leaf stem and the main stem of the plant. And the bulbils will drop to the ground once they mature, and they'll actually grow into a separate plant that will be a clone of this parent plant. So it's one of those plants that when it's happy, it will reproduce and colonize an area and you'll get a mass of this lovely, lush, jungly foliage. Now, a hybrid of this is this plant here. Begonia torsa. Begonia torsa is a first generation hybrid and it's thought to be a hybrid between Begonia grandis, you can see the similarities, especially on the back, and a large leaved species from Bhutan. Now that large leafed species is unknown but it's thought to be a plant called Begonia fusca which has enormous leaves and this hybrid or this particular plant of this hybrid is just a young plant. These leaves will get enormous, maybe four or five times the size that they are now, and it has so much hybrid vigour, um, and it grows with a similar form to Begonia grandis here. You'll get this stem that will grow up and it will do the same thing. It will produce bulbils all the way up the stem on the leaf axils to help it reproduce. Now I'm going to keep this one and pot it on to get some of those huge leaves so that I can show you later down the line. But because of its parentage of a cold hardy, high altitude species. This is showing signs of good hardiness in the UK as long as it's got a bit of drainage in winter so that the root zone of the plant doesn't become waterlogged and rot. But something that's a bit different with Begonia torsa is that leaf venation at the bottom is much more a kind of high contrast against that lush green of the leaf. Um, this is definitely one of my favourites. I did grow one a bit bigger last year, but I lost it. So I've propagated a lot, and this is one of the plants that I've grown from a leaf cutting. Now, another uh, fantastic species that's proven to be hardy down to about minus 10 in the UK is Begonia Sutherlandii. Now, this is a South African species, and it's got tiny, asymmetrical, typical begonia leaves, but a mass of orange flowers. And I've added a new cultivar to the garden it's Begonia Sutherlandii and a cultivar called Papaya on account of those orange flowers um, that are similar to the colour of a ripe papaya fruit. Um, it's much smaller growing, grows to about 50 centimetres tall and it will cascade and trail over rocks. And again, in the wild, in South Africa, this is a high altitude species, so it's used to tolerating cold temperatures, which makes it a fantastic contender for UK gardens. 
And then if it's foliage that you love and massive and unusual foliage shapes, you need to try one of these. Now this one, which is in a pot, so I can bring it a bit closer, it's looked a bit tidier. This is Begonia pancha thorensis. Now it was originally distributed as Sycamensis, meaning it comes from Sikkim, the same place as Musa Sycamensis, which if you subscribe to the channel, you will know is a hardy banana plant. So again, being a high altitude plant, it tolerates cold really well. And as with that begonia hybrid I showed you just now, this is just a young plant. These beautiful, deeply cut leaves are tiny compared to what they will get to on a mature plant. Now I've been cruel to this one. It's really in desperate need of potting up and I'll get round to that probably later this week. But this is a contender for me, one of the best foliage plants for a shady border in any garden, but especially in a tropical style garden. Now it's not just the leaves that are interesting on Begonia pancha thorensis, it's also the petioles, that's the leaf stems. They've got this lovely red spotting going up a fleshy green stem. So it's just something else that catches your eye in a shady part of the garden. Now one that's similar to this is Begonia pedata feeder. In this big pot, this one I did remember to put up. It's got that similar cut leaf, but it's much less dissected. And you can see how vigorous it is. And on this one, I've actually got some flowers. These dusty pink flowers, almost white. This is a fantastic plant for a shady border, proven completely hardy for me, down to, again, minus 10 degrees Celsius. And I like this begonia because not only do you get loads of this jungly foliage, but you get this really nice red leaf stems. Again, that's called petioles. So it's some visual interest for a shady spot in a garden. And you can see just from this one, two, three, four, five hardy begonias, the variety and the range that you can add to any garden. They're plants that survive in shade. They'll survive in, I'm in heavy clay soil. They survive in heavy clay. So long as you can raise up a bit if you've got poorly drained soil, like I say, so the root zone doesn't rot in those cold, wet winter months and they will just come back bigger and better every year. Now, if you found this video useful, please hit subscribe. There will be a list of plant names in the video description. And don't forget, we've created a Grow Paradise forum and community website where people are interacting, asking questions and supporting each other. And it's free to create an account. So head over there, create an account and join our free community. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.